Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thank you for joining me. So how much forage is needed by a white-tailed deer? Quantity is just as important as quality. You need a high quantity of high quality forages. A white-tailed deer is going to need two to three percent of his or her body weight on a dry weight basis. Now what we we sample plants, we bring them back to our lab and, and uh, dry them out in a in a drying oven to pull out all the moisture and that's what we call dry weight. And that dry weight is about one third of fresh weight. And so about two thirds of the plant is going to be water in, in essence. So fresh weight is if you go out and pick some leaves or, or the, the deer in this picture, he's, he's just taking a bite of that plant. And that plant is going to weigh a certain amount. And if he's a hundred pounds in a day's time, he needs to eat six to eight pounds of forages to maintain himself. So habitat must provide a diverse and abundant forages within your property. Now, what does six to eight percent of body weight look like? I'm going to help you understand that with a video. You may have seen this video on our MSU Deer Lab Facebook page. So I've told you that a deer is going to eat two to three percent of its body weight on a dry weight basis and six to eight percent on a wet weight basis. Now, now what's the difference between dry weight and wet weight? Well, wet weight is like a fresh leaf. You go out and pull it off the tree and it has all the water that it contains because plants have a lot of water in them. And when we calculate dry weight of forage, we literally cook it in an oven and pull out all of the moisture. So what does six to eight percent of a deer's body weight on a wet weight basis look like? Well, I didn't do this myself, but I sent out one of my trusty students, student workers, and I said, go out and collect about the amount of forage on a wet weight basis that a 150 pound deer would eat in a day. Just so I can have a, a good visual ex, uh, explanation of what that makes up. And uh, to save having to do that every time we want to talk about it, I've then created a, a set of plastic, silk, or whatever leaves that I bought at a local uh, hobby shop. And these are the equivalent amount of leaf material that it would take to fill the belly of a 150 pound deer, whether it's a doe or a, or a smaller buck, this a deer 150 pounds is gonna to have to eat this much vegetation every day. So let's see what this looks like. Imagine if you had to go out on a daily basis and leaf by leaf find this much vegetation on your property. And not just leaves, but the leaves that are palatable and higher quality protein content and the species of plants that the deer actually can eat and want to eat. So as a habitat manager, are you producing enough forage on a daily basis for every one of your bucks or does, any deer that weighs 150 pounds. This is breakfast. Okay, now we're working on lunch. And again, they're pulling off one leaf, maybe two leaves at a time. Can you go out on your property, take a plastic bag, and walk around and only select the leaves 
one at a time or two at a time of forages that a deer is going to want to eat that will also fulfill the nutritional requirements for that deer. Are you done yet? No, the deer's not done. He's still walking around looking for something to eat. One day. This is what the guy or the big girl is having to do on a daily basis to go out and forage and forage walking across your habitat. Do you have closed canopy hardwoods with not much vegetation down on the ground? Where's your deer going to find this kind of forage on a daily basis. Every day, where are your deer that weigh 150 pounds finding this much forage that meets the quality requirements within the range of mobility of the deer? Do they have to leave your property to find it or are you producing it on your property? That's a big question. It's an important question. I hope this helps you understand what we're talking about when we say providing the nutritional requirements for white-tailed deer, quantity and quality. So, deer need a lot of forage in a day. And this guy would be called a management buck in many areas of Mississippi. And he is... Um, a fully matured buck, probably weighs 220 to 240, and he's going to eat 16 to 20 pounds of forage a day, which adds up to about two or maybe even three tons of forage per year. And if you have bucks like this walking around on your property and they're not being harvested because well, he doesn't quite have big enough antlers. That's not what I'm looking for. Well, you have a problem. You have a vacuum cleaner that's living out on your property, eating up forage that you really need to have uh, available for your does to produce fawns and your bucks to grow larger antlers than this guy is growing. So that's why there's a, there's a finite supply of high quality forage on every property and we want to manage the population effectively so that the forages that are most needed go to the animals that you want to have access to them and not necessarily uh, a big bodied buck like this that has relatively small antlers for his uh, age class. So keeping with the idea of antler size and nutrition, uh, this is a quote by King Edward II's huntsman. So the huntsman is the, you know, the guy that managed the hunting for the king. Or sometime around 1380, he said, the head grows according to the pasture, good or otherwise. So what the huntsman was saying is, if you have good habitat quality, good forage quality, the head will be big, meaning the antlers. And if it's not, then the head or the antlers will be smaller. He was a pretty smart guy for his time. And he's what you call a, uh, educated through the school of hard knocks. He didn't go to any college program at Mississippi State University. He just learned from observing in the wild. 